I can report that that, that sequence, uh, Jane Russell singing, is there anyone here for love? Uh, sur while surrounded by all these um, male Olympians. This this scene was the most popular one at the Castro Theater. And <laughs> yeah. Like, and then of course, you know, years later when I started reading about this movie, of course, this is widely interpreted as one of the few movies, especially for that time, to have something like a female gaze, right? Mm. In that Jane Russell is clearly uh, erotic. You know, those men are looked at in an erotic way. But I also think there's another female gaze in the movie, which is quite literally, uh, so, you know, I mean, Jane Russell's is clearly a lusty one, right? She, she's looking at all these men. I mean, the script says it's about love, but it's clearly about sex for her. And then for Marilyn, it's clearly about material comfort and wealth. So at one point, there's this great shot where she looks at Lord Beekman, Piggy, and his <laughs> head turns into a diamond. And then, you know, so like, I think it's, it's really funny that, they both, you know, the movie is largely through their perspective, uh, mm -hmm. and it's largely about what they can get from men, right? Uh, in this, uh, in this very self-interested way that is pretty subversive in a movie from this time period, I think. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and, think I mean, we, we we programmed the film at uh, at at our theater, Cinema of the Damned, as part of a series of movies called Marrying Up, and mm -hmm. it was this idea that you can look at a lot of older films to see somewhat subversive ideas about the idea of uh, marriage and romantic love. And probably I think the most subversive idea in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is, uh, is that women are not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, swept up in the idea of, or, or shouldn't necessarily be swept up in the idea of romantic love. And I think it's, it's a uh, Lorelei's practicality that's so interesting, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, I don't know if it's, to Howard Hawks credit or to the to the screenwriters or, or whoever that they may not have had the 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 phrase male or female gaze you know available to them but do you think that was intentional that they were doing something like that that was that was well that was subversive that we see it now but do you think they were they were aware of it at the time that they were doing it boy that's hard to say um I don't see Hawks having that kind of motivation to do that in the film, even if it's in the film, uh, being aware of that. Um, uh, Monroe is quite aware of, obviously, the male gaze uh, and uh, the whole issue of manipulating men and not being, you know, all that thrilled um, by the system in which she finds herself. Um, she had just come out of um, a collaboration with Ben Hecht, not in a movie, but in, in doing uh, an autobiography called My Story. And uh, she, it's, it's really quite a remarkable piece of work. A lot of what Ben Hecht did was remarkable. Uh, one of the things he did was call up Sidney Skolsky, a Hollywood columnist. Um, I mentioned this in my, my biography of Marilyn Monroe actually in the acknowledgments. Uh, and Hecht read over the phone to um, Skolsky, to this commas, you know, um, he's telling him, I'm working with Marilyn and here's what she's saying. And I'm trying to capture her voice because Monroe didn't actually write the book. It's sort of an as told to book. Uh, and Skolsky was reassuring him, yeah, that's exactly what she's like. And in that in that book, she, she presents a kind of, um, uh, cynical view. It was really a, a curious thing. I mean, it was never finished. She married DiMaggio and he said, don't do any more of that mm -hmm. um, because it, 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 it presented a certain kind of a realistic, candid quality that uh, um, is, is, doesn't appear in, in her films very much. That's kind of a roundabout, you know, quite, you know, answer to your question about what's going on in the film. I think all think, kinds of things go on uh, in films that the makers of them, the nuances certainly, or what it looks like to a later age, they're not aware of. Right. So I, I think Hawks is, you know, he's doing something for Daryl Zanuck. You know, he tells Daryl Zanuck, you know, uh, you ought to put Marilyn, you know, don't put her in Niagara or the serious dramatic films. Uh, she's going to do much better in comedy and, and uh, you know, and Zanuck says, gentlemen for blondes, I mean, can she sing? And Hawk says, of course she can sing. And Zenex says, well, how do you know that? He said, well, I heard her in my car. She was singing to the radio. She can sing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
You know, um, I just want to say that what, what Carl said about Hawks and uh, Monroe is interesting because the the other, as to my knowledge, the only other movie they did together was Monkey Business, and of course that yes. was earlier in her career. But there she was playing a very stereotypical, uh, yeah, bimbo part, the secretary whose major purpose in that was to basically get have passes made at her for the entire movie. But I do think it's notable, and I and again I'm not a historian. I don't know a lot about Hawks that uh, in a lot of his most iconic sort of screwball uh, comedies, you have very strong female characters. Yes. Uh, you know, and arguably the, the, the sort of gender power dynamics in something like Bringing Up Baby uh, to a lesser degree, uh, His Girl Friday. These are movies with very strong female characters that make me think Hawks was at least uh, interested, uh, you know, in, in this theme, uh, whether or not he fully kind of commits to it on a conscious level. I think that's right. He, he wasn't, you know, he, he, the idea of a woman taking the lead, so to speak, at, at certain points in the film wasn't, wasn't going to trouble Hawks at all. He, he does have these strong women characters. I think that's, that's true. And I think that, that certainly is part of what makes uh, Gentlemen Prefer Bonds a, a Hawks film, uh, among other things, for sure.